Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. In today's video, I want to answer the question, can you plant in a wicker basket? You absolutely can, but probably not in the traditional way you're used to planting containers. They're beautiful uh, color and texture. I love to use them in the garden. They do bring a lot of warmth, but because they're made of natural materials, they will eventually start to break down, um, especially if you try to plant straight in them. You know, the more they're exposed to elements and water, um, they will start to essentially compost from the bottom up usually. There are a few things you can do to kind of prolong the life. There's a couple different ways you can plant them. First off, you want to put them in a spot where they're not as exposed. So if you have a covered patio or, or an overhang, um, some area like that where you could plant these up and use them, but they're not getting any extra rain or anything like sprinkler water or something like that, that will prolong their life. Um, you can also spray them down with a sealer. This is just a wood sealer that I use on everything that I put outside. This is spar urethane. Um, I sprayed this one down earlier because I knew I was going to be using it. This might get you one extra season. I mean, it's not going to prolong the life, you know, hugely, but it will help. Um, and then the other thing you can do is just plant it up properly. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you today. There are two ways to plant them. You can line them and plant them like you kind of would a normal pot. So what you do, and I'm not going to do this method today um, just because I feel like this is a better candidate for the second way, but you would line the whole basket with burlap. So something like this right here, which you could pick up at a craft store or perhaps your local garden center. We carry these down at my parents' garden center, just unused burlap sacks. And I have a gob of them here because I use them for all kinds of stuff. But you line it with that first, especially if it's in a, like a more open weave basket because you don't want to see black plastic because that's what we're going in with next. Um, so you'll do either moss or burlap first. First, then you go in with a thick plastic. You could use like a heavy duty garbage bag or something like that. Then you put that on the inside, but you won't see it in the end because you've got your burlap layer. Make sure to cut holes for drainage. That's super, super important to keep your plants happy. Um, so do that after you're done putting the plastic in and then you introduce your soil, plant up your, whatever you're putting in your basket. And then when you're all done, you take both that burlap and the plastic layer and just trim it right around the outside and kind of fold it over just the edges. And then you can top dress the soil with either more burlap, pine cones, moss, whatever, just to kind of cover up the mechanics of the planter. Now, the more heavy duty your basket is, the longer it's gonna hold up because where you cut your drainage hole, water will be co going out of that. It will be making contact with your basket. Um, so it will eventually rot it out down there. Um, but like I said, this is not a long-term thing. It's just something fun to use for a season or two. And you can usually find these for really inexpensive at thrift stores or flea market stuff, something like that. So the second way you can plant them is kind of the cheater way, I think, um, because it's not truly planting. What I'm gonna do is just countersink this inkberry holly. This is called a strong box inkberry holly right down inside the basket. And then I'm just gonna cover the whole thing up with burlap. But the thing that you wanna do, and this is actually the way you can get the longest life out of your basket, is you wanna put your plant, your pot, in a saucer inside the basket. So any water that comes through the bottom of the pot is gonna collect in that saucer and then I can pour it out. So you just wanna make sure that if you tend to be a person who likes to really water things heavy, just check that saucer on a routine basis and then pour it out away from the basket. That way you protect the whole bottom of your basket and everything. So I've got my saucer in there. This is a 12 inch size deep saucer. It's just clear, picked it up at the garden center for I think like $2 is what this was. Uh, just put that down at the bottom and then I'm going to take my holly and just put it down like that. And I think it looks really pretty. This one I actually kind of want to train to be a little bit of a topiary ball, like with a tiny little trunk. I think it has really good potential for that, but it'll work great in this container for now. Then I'm going to take my burlap. Let's see, I've got two pieces that I know I want to have on the top as a top dress. The other ones I'm going to shove in any extra air that's around this pot. Because for now, since it is winter time, it is kind of an odd time to plant. I want to make sure that there's no extra air around it. I want to give this plant as much insulation as I possibly can. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that really quickly. Get it snugged in there really tight. And also in the spring, if I were to want to keep this in the basket, which I think I'm going to be planting this out in the landscape, but if I were going to be keeping it in the basket, I would go ahead and remove these burlap sacks once it warms up. That way it's easier to pop this in and out to empty the saucer. Right now I'm going to be giving it very minimal water through the winter. Okay, so I've got two bags left and I'm just going to use these as a top dress. One of them is going to kind of come around the front side here. And I can't see what this looks like, so <laughs> I hope it looks good. I might have to do a little extra tucking once I can come around the front there. 
So I like the angle of the shrub. I think the whole thing is pretty. I love the basket. I think the burlap actually adds a really pretty uh, textural element. It adds more warmth and it's serving a purpose too by keeping the plant a little warmer. I am gonna be putting this up by our back kitchen door, which I think will be helpful for, for this Strongbox Ilex because this is a zone five through nine plant. Uh, we are a zone five. And if you are planting something in a container and you want it to overwinter, you always wanna choose a shrub that's rated two zones lower than your current growing zone. So like for me, I live in a zone five. It's safest for me to plant something that's rated at a zone three which I don't always do, obviously. I'm not doing that today, but I do also have some plants out in pots right now. I've got some boxwoods that are zone five that are doing great so far. Our winter has been mild, but I will be keeping an eye on our weather. And if it does get close to zero, I probably will bring this back into the cold frame to make sure that it survives. And just a couple more things about this plant because I'm excited about these. I'm gonna be planting a lot more of these. You'll see these in a lot more videos. Um, these are a type of inkberry holly. There's this one called Strongbox that grows about two to three feet and it's a native substitute for a boxwood. They're not suscept susceptible to blight or bugs um, or winter burn, which is wonderful. It's just something that I don't know why I haven't planted them in my garden, but I just haven't. So I'm very excited to get going with these. There's also a variety called Gem Box. So this one actually blooms little white blooms in the spring. And if you happen to have a native male variety already planted nearby, those flowers will develop into bluish black berries later on in the season. But I don't think there are any male varieties commercially available at this point. So for most of us, they won't form. And kind of a fun fact about the berries that I had no idea about is apparently they were used by Civil War soldiers as ink um, for their personal correspondence. I thought that was really cool. I read that on the Proven Winners website. And last, they take really well to pruning. Um, so just like boxwood, you can train them into topiaries and train them into hedges and they take really well to that. So that's super important to me in my garden. So now the only thing left is to take this up to the kitchen door and get it all placed. So this is the back kitchen door right here. And as you can see, I haven't done very much with it. This is all I did all winter. I hung a wreath and that is it. So I'm going to be replacing the doormat because this one's gross. Um, I've cleaned it a ton of times, but it's pretty wore out as well. And then I'm going to be storing this until next winter. So I'm going to bring the container in and then a couple new fresh elements. So I've got the basket right here and I just want to set it to the left of the door like that. Doesn't that look pretty? I love it. So this is kind of a weird door because I really can only do either. I have to flank it by putting pots down on either side or I can only do one because there's only enough room on the one side. So let's get rid of this. I've got the other two things right around here. See, I already brought them out. So this is the doormat that I'm using. Simple. And then let's take this off. The wreath. Okay, now you, well, it's not straight. So I just got done making this wreath, not super happy with it, but it does look bright and fresh. And that's kind of in the end what I was going for. I just wanted to just perk this area up a little bit. And I think that these three things have done the job. Sometimes it does not take much to make something look a lot better than it did before. So anyway, um, the basket will live here for this winter. I'll only water this probably every two weeks, which is typically what I do with all of my plants and containers. Same goes for like this window box right here. I give it water every two weeks. It's looking, <laughs> looking a little tired. Um, we're all ready for spring around here. So anyway, to get back to the original thought of this video, you can plant in baskets. You can either do it the cheater way like I did and it's very fast and easy and it doesn't take very much stuff to do it. Or you can line your basket and plant more traditionally straightened soil. Your plant will be happier for a little bit longer, but Baskets aren't a long-term solution. So honestly, planting them like this is just probably every bit as good as planting them straight in soil in the basket. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you learned something new and we will see you in the next one. Bye.